What is up guys, welcome to a new video. So we always look at the top tier stuff on the channel, right? But today why don't we look at some picks that I think are secretly pretty strong, but aren't talked about often or played very much right now. Normally I'm gonna save these picks up and spread them out, but let's just get them all into one big video. Timestamps for each role are gonna be in the description, along with a list of the champions if that's what you wanna see. By the way, we are gonna keep going with haste on the channel now as well. The feedback so far has been really helpful. So thank you for letting me know if you did in the comments of the last video. It might not work for everybody, we're not saying it will, but it has lowered my ping and made my connection stable to NA plus a lot of you guys have said it works which is why I feel comfortable recommending it it's free to try it in beta so go and give it a go link is down in the description and see if it can help you as well so we're gonna start with support first for a change the first one is actually gonna be Zerath I was first shown the ways of Zerath support by a friend of mine treats a challenger support main he played it with my Jin, and the double ultimate snipe combo was the funniest and most broken thing I think I played in a long time I looked into it more and it's actually really good though like it's very long range it's amazing mid to late game damage with a decent enough early as well. It's more of a carry support than actual supporty support though. Like you have a stun which can lead to good trades in lane but it's mostly about your damage. Xerath has really high base damage, really good scaling and overall makes a really solid support. Build wise, I would go Ghost into more damage. You can kind of go Utility, Rylize into Leandrews if you want to, a bit cheaper but I found myself just leaning towards Morello, Luden's Death Cap for full burst. Vagar support is the next one. It's more tank than damage actually because stupidly enough you don't need to build AP to do damage on him anyway. I've been solo killed by him a lot of times while he's pretty tanky as well which is really depressing. In lane he's got a very good AoE stun to control trades. He has poke and the ultimate finisher all while stacking AP from his passive as well. Team fights he's able to be really annoying, stun a whole team if he lands it right and still manage to burst people down as well. The damage can definitely take you by surprise though. One because he's the support so you don't really expect it and number two because he's building like a tank. A lot go Courage of the Colossus actually though Thunderlords will be good as well. Either coin or spell that you start into kind of tanky like you're playing a Nautilus or an Alistair, Redemption, Locket, and stuff like that. Nautilus is the last one, the most normal pick out of these three, but he's really underrated and actually really strong in this meta right now. He punishes auto-attacking base AD carries very hard. Like, he's got a good lane phase with crowd control and damage, which means crit champions often get 1v1 by Nor. Kind of a trend here, sadly, actually, but with the more aggressive ADs as well and more low health supports against him, it makes his kill lane way more effective. The amount of crowd control he has buys his team a lot of time. Like, CC is the easiest way to win a game, honestly. The AD carries is going to spend a lot of time running away way or stunned rather than actually attacking. Build is just like standard courage, could maybe do Stoneborn Pact actually with face of the mountain, redemption, lock it, tank like normal. There's nothing weird about this one, but he's just not seen very much. So that's going to be the format then, three picks per roll. Next one is going to be top lane starting with Alawi. Probably one of the weirdest and badly designed champion kits recently I've actually seen. Not bad because she sucks, but bad because it's not that easy to understand and use properly. We have like random tentacles slapping you constantly, the ghost version of you, do you run away, do you stay, nobody knows, and even how the ultimate priority prioritizes targets. The good thing is though, if you play her and know that stuff, chances are your opponent doesn't and you can use that against them. I can sum it up really easy. Your damage is insane. It's hard to dodge and it's very fast. It is basically about the damage. Build wise like Cleaver, Sterex, Death Dance, Tanky with Grass seems to be the best right now as well. I'd imagine a Fervor would actually be pretty disgusting on her, but she doesn't tend to auto very much. So maybe you can't like stack it as well as others. Yorick is probably the most annoying top laner to play against. So he's going to go on here as well. Even being out someone like Singed. One minute you're spanking him and you control the lane. Everything is Gucci. The next minute he bases, picks up a sheen and he absolutely bends you over. The cage thing like where he traps you is so punishing. If you mess up in the lane phase, you're probably gonna die for it. At least blow your flash. He has endless sustain, pushing power and damage from range. Once he gets ahead, there is not really much you can do to stop him. Build by his Trinity Force to start with. ZZ Rock Portal to be a dick, but tank afterwards. Grasp or Fervor are both good. You can build more damage if you want to, but it's not really needed. So the last one for top lane is Sun. He's a pretty super pick in my opinion. It's not quite like as durable as other tanks, but that's because he does a lot more damage. AD Scion is a thing, by the way, that you really do not want to meet in the solo queue. Losing half your health to a Q is not cool. His lane phase is actually pretty good for a tank. He has good engage, disruption, and you really can't ignore him in a team fight. Even after he dies, you have to run away from his ghosty zombie thing. Plus as well, you can actually choose the crap out of the enemy team and get a lead early. Go steal the red buff level one or blue buff, whatever. Fight it, die, kill the rest with your passive and respawn with a red buff. Just make sure they don't know you're there and kill you. Build wise, it depends how big your balls are. Either full tank or titanic tank or go full AD lethality. So let's go on to the jungle. First one, Skana. So this one comes with a warning of you suck early game really bad, but mid to late game he is a beast, like a real hard carry jungler. Stoneborn Pact is actually pretty legit on him, but it's how much impact he can have in a game. You can carry yourself with your damage. Go Trinity Force into Warrior and watch your burst damage ruin people. People do not expect it. You can help your team carry as well, like tank after damage or just Cinder Hulk into Trinity 
you catch people with your ultimate, you stun, disrupt, run AD carries. You're probably the most underrated jungler in my opinion. Build wise, as we said, either warrior or Sin Hulk into Trinity, then Dead Man's going Angel, Visage, or Banshee, stuff like that, with Courage of the Costas, or actually further as well if you're gonna go damage. Kindred's new mark system helped out a little bit, but she does crazy damage early, which I didn't notice until seeing her more recently. The thing with Kindred is she should suck early game, right? She's basically an AD carrying the jungle, but if she gets ahead though, gets a few kills and especially a few marks, she does a stupid amount of damage, almost killing people in like three or four shots. Your ultimate as well is really, really good with redemption, which most people don't think about. You ultimate, then redemption at the same time on top of it, and you're guaranteed nobody dies before getting that heal. Even though most people think she sucks, she has ranked top five for damage done via a jungler on average for about six weeks now. She's been forgotten about, but she would surprise you with how much she can actually output. And personally for the build, I really like Bloodraiser, Runin's Cleaver, and then Blade. The synergy is ridiculous with that build. The last one is Nunu. So Stonewall Pact is legit so good on this guy, and he's sleeping on people right now, much better than everybody thinks he is. Stoneborn lasts four seconds, right? His Snowball has a four second cooldown with no cooldown reduction, by the way. So basically, whoever he wants to hit with that permanently will be healing people with a Pact. So basically, he's giving 45% attack speed from his Blood Boil and healing from the Pact to people like Callista or Twitch or Caitlyn. Plus the other way around as well, remember, snowballing and reducing those meta AD carries on the enemy team's attack speed, and that is why he's so underrated right now. A 5% max health when you build Cinder Hulk and a full tank is also really strong, but it's mainly the buffing with the Pact. Build-wise, surprisingly, Mastery is Stoneborn Pact with Cinder Hulk, Visage, Tabby, Frozen Heart, Thorn Mount, maybe Locket, or even Ardent Sensor or Redemption, which applies with the Pact healing. Moving on to AD carries, we're going to look at Kennen first. AD Kennen is weird, and everybody always plays it wrong. It actually tilts me, but it's really strong at the moment. Auto attack and AD carries are back, so that's one good thing. Buffing supports as well. AD carries with weaker lanes to bully, and also a blade buff as well. If we build him like a Callista, you'll soon realize why he can be an awesome pocket pick, honestly. Blade is really good on him. Runins as well. Bloodthirster after, or even Rage Bait even. I really cannot explain it better than he's basically a Callista with a bit less damage, but more crowd control. The biggest thing though, if you're going to play this and try it, do not rush in and use your ultimate aggressively in fights. Your ultimate is self peel that stuns people who run at you, okay? This tilts me so hard. Do not fly in with your E and ultimate on like AP Cannon. That is not how the AD version works. Build wise, Blade, Runins, Bloodthirster, Rage Bait, Sterix, and more. Even a Black Cleaver with Fervor is really good. This one is not Lethality Poke Varus, okay? That is everywhere. That's not secretly strong at all. But Crit Varus or Attack Speed Varus definitely is. Fervor is insane on him, okay? You can stack it really quickly with your passive attack speed. It feeds into your auto attack damage and your abilities. Plus, you're an absolute tank killer. There are two ways you can do this if you want to. One, you build Essence Reaver, Runins, Infinity Edge, or what I prefer actually, Runins, Infinity Edge, a Shiv, or Phantom Dancer, so triple crit. You attack super fast, you do loads of percentage damage, plus you crit like mad. That's kind of more the standard version. The second one is you build Blade, Runins, and Rage Blade. This build absolutely wrecks people if you can set up at the start of a fight. So if you get your Rage Blade stacked, basically, both are good, both are fun, and both are very strong. If we go back to more meta champions, Trisana is flying under the radar and has been for a little while. She struggles early because she really needs items, but that's kind of where the meta supports come into play more. By early, I mean like mid game, really. Like her lane phase is pretty decent, but mid it definitely isn't. But Lulu, Sona, or like an Ardent Sensor gives us that needed boost that we need to get to late game. Blade First is also pretty good, actually. It gives you a stronger lane phase, even though it does delay your press Q and crit everybody to death spike. Damage wise, you're not going to be as good as like a Caitlyn or a Twitch, at least not mid game, but she is much safer, easier to play, and she's still an amazing late game champion. In my opinion, can do a bit more early in the lane phase. Build wise, as we said, you can go Blade into Runes and crit, or just Runes into Infinity Edge and normal crit afterwards like a Caitlyn. For Mastery is like Fervor and Warlords are both really good on her. Fervor is kind of more early and especially if you build a Blade early and Warlords is late game. Mid lane is last because it's hard to call anything secretly strong when it's the most diverse role in the entire game to be honest. Cassidy though has kind of fallen out of favor mainly because Riot changed him to be the AP like ultimate AP destroyer and then they buffed Lethality so AD was everywhere. Cassidy is actually really good against mages and especially more passive ones. He can block their damage and out trade, he out scales and has his monster one shot late game. Surprisingly, Death by Touch is the best mastery at the moment, spamming your Q over and over. Apparently, it does kind of make sense. Now he's not strong early. The game in general, though, is going later, right? There is less AD around. You can afford to farm up and be crap early if you get a chance to take over late game. Rod of Ages is first. It's kind of a slow ramping item, which is partly why it's so bad early. But into Lich Bane, Abyssal, Zonya's Void. Like, Lich Bane and Rod of Ages is a massive spike in damage and burst. Talia is basically the Yasuo of mid lane, okay? She either destroys or absolutely 100% feeds and is useless. Her kit is really good if you know what you're doing though. Like consistent damage output that is hard to dodge away from. Good burst.
burst potential with a trap and minefield, but also poke. Fizz is kind of hard to deal with, but you have good matchups versus most other mages just because she can push them in and then roam with her ultimate. That is so good, by the way, as screwing bot lane right now, especially. Immobile AD carries and low health supports who can't get away. Yes, please. Build wise, I've actually seen people do that GLP 800 item, the Hextech one, but it seems pretty good. A standard would be more Morello into Ryla as the Andrews Death Cap Void with Thunderlords. So the last pick of this video, finally, we have Velkos. In my opinion, the best poke champion you can play right now mid lane. And a big part of that is because his lane phase is not complete crap like normal. I say poke, but it's also burst, right? He does both really well. That's the thing he can get you low from far away, then also burst you down from far away with his full combo. He's pretty hard to play against. I think if you walk up to him, he's going to knock you up with his W for a really bad trade. It's hard to gank for that reason as well. The team fight is insane. It's really high damage, good utility with slows and knockouts, but true damage burst on multiple people. You have to actually play smart to not walk into that kit, which solo queue is not famous for. Build wise, I love Ludens, Morello, and Deathcap. Just full ham. Like your job is to one shot people, not build and play like a pussy. So I hope you guys enjoyed my secretly strong picks for each role. There are loads, but these are the ones I have my eye on right now. Thank you for watching until the end. Remember to check out Haste, but for now, let's go to the robots.